Imagine you're directing a movie and 35% of your script takes place inside a taxi cab. Each key relationship is between the driver of that cab and one of his passengers. You, the director, are a pretty big deal, so you've got a decent budget and 17 Ford Crown Victorias to play with, but how many different ways can there really be for you to shoot that one car? Isn't it going to get kind of boring? You have a couple of different angles to work with, the sides of the car, the front, and the back, but it's a compact space without many options for where you can place your actors. Your options for blocking are even further limited by the fact that traditionally, passengers in a taxi will ride in the back seat. Are these limited possibilities really going to sustain you through 40 minutes of runtime? Let's look at how director Michael Mann and cinematographer Dion Beebe solved this problem in 2004's Collateral. Within the first act of the movie, we join cab driver Max on two rides that will change the course of his life forever, and the cab is more than just a backdrop here. Max's first fare for the evening is a lawyer named Annie, and we start this scene in one-shots, meaning we only see one figure in the frame at a time. At this point, Max might as well be on another planet, because Annie is laser-focused on her phone. She's even further obscured by the glass partition, but after riding in the cab for some time, she flips her phone shut and makes a bet with Max on the quickest way to her destination. Soon, Max starts cracking some jokes, and then this happens. How many cabbies do you know get you into an argument to save you money? There were two of us. I had to kill the other one. I don't like competition. We get our very first two shot with both faces in frame as Annie laughs. This is where the characters finally start to connect. Once they reach Annie's office, the conversation goes on a little while longer. No longer driving, Max can turn to face Annie. For this part of the conversation, we get a more typical over-the-shoulder setup. But compare this over-the-shoulder scene in Collateral with this one from Manhunter. There's one key difference. Here, because of the way it's staged, the visual gap between the characters is incredibly small. Whereas Hannibal Lecter's face is small next to Will Graham's larger shoulder, Annie's and Max's faces are much closer in size, and this closeness is further emphasized by the tightness of the close-up. Mann could have chosen to restrict this scene to one-shots to limit our awareness of how close the characters are physically, but instead, the earlier distance between them is completely collapsed, culminating in Max reaching through the partition to hand Annie his postcard. But for Max's next fare, that distance is thrust wide open again. After dropping off Annie, Max picks up Vincent. Unlike Annie, Vincent is trying to make conversation, but now Max is the one who's distracted. Notice that we're back to one-shots here, but this time there's more than just a glass partition obstructing our view. Instead of coming at the characters head-on, the cameras are now also mounted to the sides of the car, so in addition to often showing Max and Vincent in profile, they're also surrounded by literal walls. We finally go inside the cab when Vincent feels that he's uncovered something about Max. Even though this is supposed to be a temporary gig, Max has been driving this cab for 12 years. But Max doesn't want to open up further, so we stay in those one-shots. It's not until they reach Vincent's first stop that the ice begins to thaw, but this time it's not because Max turned on the charm, it's because Vincent is making a business proposition. He'll pay Max $700 to violate regulations and be his personal chauffeur for the evening. What Max doesn't know at this time is that Vincent is an assassin, and that he's asking Max to escort him between his five targets for that night. But it's too late. Once you're in a two-shot together, the die has been cast. When they come together and all of a sudden, it's like a spike in a railroad right here in this point where things are gonna change this night. Max's conversations with Annie and Vincent follow some similar patterns. They start off disconnected, though on different sides. They talk about work and LA and touch on Max's dream of taking control of his career before finally reaching some common ground. But these scenes diverge visually to signal the way the relationships between these characters will develop throughout the rest of the film. When viewed this way, the cab transcends its role as just a practical setting and becomes the frame that mediates the ways that Max can associate with his passengers. 
Once that frame starts to break down, though, Max is forced to confront an unstructured reality and learn how to move through the world beyond the safe confines of the taxi cab. Everything I talked about here was just in the first 20 minutes of Collateral, so I would encourage you to give the film a watch or a rewatch and see all the other ways that Man and BB approached the restricted set of a taxi cab throughout the rest of the movie. This movie really starts to open up once you start to observe the ways that Max and the cab are connected. Thanks so much for watching. I never really know what to say in these outro parts, but please consider subscribing if you liked the video, and goodbye! <laughs>